Joining us now live on the show, Tommy Wielding Jr. Tommy, uh, you know, I grew up in the northwest of England. Remember the band Happy Mondays? I'd imagine this is a pretty happy Monday for you, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it is actually a good, good analogy, a really good analogy. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's still kind of just washing over me, to be honest, because it's uh, it's one of those, like, it's it's not like a championship final that you've won and the celebrations go on there. It's it's a marathon and, um, you know, to be able to have achieved something as significant as we did and book our place into CONCACAF with the company that's in there now, I think it's all just starting to filter now and we've done it with two home games to spare. You have, and I love the word significant because it is significant. Mm. Let's get into that in a minute. But before we look back a little bit too further, let's look a bit shorter. Take me back to Saturday. So you win at York. You gather everything up. It becomes a road trip. You get back to the airport. I don't believe the flight was too delayed. You get on the plane. What's the mood like? And uh, obviously, t- talk us through following the game and then when it all kind of went off, as we saw in the videos. Yeah, so it, it's fortunate now with all the travel miles we have, the guys that are able to get into like the WestJet lounge. So what was really cool is they're all walking in their tracksuits, having a bite to eat. And there was a, there was a calmness about them, knowing that, all we've ever said on, on this is just do what we need to do against the opponent in front of us, and then we'll take care of or control the things we can control. And that's all we did. So you can at least watch it in a relaxed state because we have got the three points, and it was a tough three points against the York side that give us hell in that second half. Um, a few battered and bruised bodies, but as we're watching it, you know, staff are over one, players are over one, but you can hear. And, and, the, and the time delay between each was interesting. And the way the game started with, the Daniels early goal and then the response from uh, Wuven's Pacius so were like, wow, this is a game. And and then I think we're all a bit taken aback by the, the dad and Luke and Duncan incident. I think that rocked the lads because, you know, as much as there's rivalries at place, the safety of players and fellow colleagues uh, was pivotal. And, you know, fortunately, I was able to talk to James Merriman after the game as well and get a check in. But that rocked us. And then we get on the flight, game re- resumes. I thought Adam Jenkins did a great job in updating people about the health and, and wellness of the of the players. But then we watch it and we didn't think we would be able to watch it in the in the air. But our video analyst, Daniel Hutchins, got on the One Soccer website, not the app. And for those that do travel with WestJet, do it through the website because you can actually stream the games. And we had one in the front, one in the back, and we had to t- tell the WestJet um, stewards that, you know, uh, the flight attendants that if there's cheers and yelling, please let people know we're not a crazy group of guys on a stag. Dude, this is a, a professional football team that potentially could win uh, a place in the CONCACAF Champions Cup and, and, and win the league. Um so, yeah, that was kind of the story. And then when it did go through and then there was that feed where at 2-1, it cut because of the delay. And we're like, what's going on here? And we're checking flash score. And, and then suddenly we chop back in and said, there's been a goal. There was a cheer. And then I think the celebrations have now been shared. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. What a brilliant story. Yeah, don't worry. Don't call the police on us. We don't have to yeah. be landing. <laughs> <laughs> don't drop us off in Winnipeg on the way back, please. <laughs> uh, you, spent enough time, you spent enough time there in a bubble yeah, before. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Uh, so you get back to Calgary, and then obviously you get to share it, I'd imagine, with some staff mm. members immediately as well, yeah. Tommy, who played a big part that didn't make the trip. Yeah, so what was nice is we had families, friends and fans that were there greeting us at the airport, which was a nice you know, uh, surprise and delight for us. So... That kind of got people going, I know. And then everyone separated off in their own way. And some of the players and their wives went out for dinner. And I know I just literally sat with my family just around the fire pit with a a nice cocktail and just a, wow, we, we, we did it. So it was um re- really cool experience. And, you know, what we're going to actually address the players this morning, because there was some that didn't travel. And, and we've always said, you know, this is the cavalry. This is the army of people that have been a part of this success. It's not one person that's made us win this. It's been a million little details from lots of people along the way. And uh, I think that's what we're going to do, acknowledge today, um, the achievement so far, and then we can move forward on what our next challenge is. Let's get into that word significant then. You are the league mm. champions. You've won something mm-hmm. that football people that follow leagues all around the world mm. will have a com- tremendous amount of respect because of the, the 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 amount of work that it takes to win mm. that, right? And that's what mm-hmm. football are about, about, you know, titles and you've won a title mm. here. You've also been remarkably close in the past. One, you you, you could have won titles if they were honoured in 2019, mm. but you've been mm-hmm. remarkably close to lifting something in the past. Tommy, does it make it a bit sweeter 
that you actually didn't do that? Like if you had won maybe an, an All-Star Shield in the past and now you win this, does it make it a bit sweeter that this is your really your first major silverware that it is a league title? Uh, no, I'd have collected them all if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, think, I think they're slightly addicting and you ask Pep Guardiola or even I was looking at Sir Alex Ferguson and someone had sent me you know his history and I think it was his sixth or, or even his seventh season before they actually won the league at Manchester United you don't get that amount of time with managers these days I think it's interesting because when we go into the recruitment market and of the foreign players when we're talking to players and agents overseas they always congratulate and say, oh, you won the regular season in 2019. You've won the season in 2020. Because if you look at it that way, we tied the points with uh, Forge in, in, what was it, 2021. They had better goal difference. So people, when they do their brief research on us, think that we've got more titles than we actually do. But now I think, like I said, I think it's, it, it was remarkable from the, um, the commissioner to say, look, there's two CONCACAF bursts to go. Let's make it significant, you know, because I look at what Ottawa did last year. That was incredible. They were incredible, you know, um, because they, they got the points. They got the points on the road. They, they went from last to first and they should be recognised for it. You know, Forge before that should probably have another league title in, in it and ours included, but now you can celebrate both. And I do, I've always said, for the longevity, the purists will always favour the, the the regular season and the supporters, there's an excitement in that. And we've got both. So let's let's enjoy both. Yeah, well said on that one. Um, as you craft a champion, you also have to have that balance between on-field talent and off-field mentality. Um, when did it click to you that this group was different? Was it as early as the preseason? Was there a certain moment this season in a game that this group was different and they had a bit more of that, um, I suppose, collective wiseness about them? Um, I think it was a, a constant evolution is what I'd say, because the preseason, we actually, once we self-reflected, and I think you've got probably interviews with me before, I, I said we overachieved last year. We actually shouldn't have been just a bad call away from reaching a final we weren't good enough in a lot of aspects of the game. And we said, right, we have to look at who we bring in. Uh, they have to be characters and, and capable players. We, they, we, we need to have difference makers on the pitch and difference makers in the, in the locker room and in the communities, people that care for the crest. Um, and I think we've worked even through the season when we've made some trades and things like that. It was tough to let Jose Escalante go, but it was for the right reasons because he wasn't, you know, it, it, his family was on his mind. You know, uh, our goalie, uh, you know, he stepped away. We brought in a new goalie coach and Jake Davis. Uh, they were tough decisions to make. You know, Mickey Cantav, you know, he, he's done great at Vancouver. And in Mile Henry, we've got, we've got another young diamond. Um, and all the while, we were trying to create something. We tried inverted fullbacks in preseason. You know, we, we got beat by Portland Pilots, NCAA team in preseason. And we're like, we got work to do here. And and this was just, but we were trying something. And, and I always go through that forming, knowing, storming and performing about team building. I'm a big believer. I wouldn't ever say the best coach, but I know how to build things. And, and I knew I could see the struggles and, you know, there's no success without suffering. And, and I think we went through that. The biggest challenge was obviously the, the, the six ties in a row, if you include the can champ and that went to penalties. We hadn't tasted victory for six games and we hadn't really lost. We knew we were onto something. And I think, you know, the Ottawa game at home was significant. I think the Pacific game away where we took the two goal lead, we ended up winning that game 2-1. I thought because Pacific, the way they started, they were dangerous. And to go and play them at their place and the possession we had, we were right. We found something here. Let's lean into it. And we kept going. Yeah, some great stories there. This has been a league this year. I was just been in the office this morning talking to the commissioner. A league of what I called leads relinquished, not given up, because I like mm. relinquished because it shows what mm. teams do well when they're behind. In fact, we've had 57 leads relinquished this season. We had 44 all of last season. So get teams, it just shows you games that are always going from whistle to whistle. Um, you actually are tied in the league of giving up leads by 11 this year, but most of it is all from the start of the season. You had eight in your first seven games, which is remarkable to think. But the big one for me, seven in your first eight, the big one for me was Ali Moosey's free kick against York because mm. Babuli had tied it again and, you, and you'd given up another lead. And I felt mm. like you needed to learn how to win. What was that like mm. when Moosey put that in? I think it was your seventh game and you got that victory. And finally, you could, we could start saying, hang on, this is a team that's unbeaten and not winless, which is a big difference. Yeah, it is. And, you know, like I said about 
success without suffering. The, when, when you have challenges, that's the only time you build resilience is, is through the times that challenge you. You know, when we're winning now, we're not really building resilience. We built that resilience early in the season versus the late. We, you know, we, we've often had to learn the hard way through the playoff system. Now we learn it early. Mushi's magic, and that's him. That's him in a nutshell. He's got it in him where he can create something out of nothing. And the way he stepped up, but he rehearses that. So when he's standing over the ball in front of the foot soldiers, there was just this confidence, but it was the move prior that Gote got it. Mm. And that's when everyone started to say, Wolf, this kid can play. He just, I think he skipped past about three people on the way to there and was hauled down. And we thought, right, this is the moment now. We've got that dynamism in our attack that, that can hurt. And then Moosey's quality. But, I mean, it, it, you know, it's great because you're seeing also Sergio now probably having one of his best seasons with us most minutes. But he's now scoring in important goals, right? When we beat Ottawa at home to beat an Ottawa away to score in the winner at York on the weekend. He's that pivotal you know, emotional anchor and Marco making big saves, right? There's, there's been some big players, but yeah, that Moosey free kick was something else and the start of a cracking journey. A couple more with you, Tommy, before we let you go. You mentioned mm. earlier about what uh, people around the world talk to you about the success mm. um, in terms of regular season. No team has earned more points in regular season since the CPL started than Cavalry. Mm. And a lot of that has also got down to the fact that your home record is absolutely immense. Mm -hmm. You now come home to play two more home games and if all goes well, you don't need to go away again. You know, I mean, that mm -hmm. must be pretty refreshing as well to think that I know how confident you are. You got two more home games. You won't take your foot off the pedal. I know against Valor, you get to lift the trophy. But how much are you looking forward now to building a little bit more of that camaraderie in, a, in hopefully a, a long stretch of four games uh, at home that can lead to another trophy? Well, I, I think with this group, what I've understood from them, and I think you've seen it when you were doing some of the interviews, they just they're so competitive, whether they're playing you know, uh, Catan or partners board game or game of cards or game of juggle at the end of practice. They're so competitive with each other. So as a coach, what, and our coaching staff, we have to challenge them. We've still got objectives that we actually want to meet in the regular season because when the history books are told, yes, we'll have a trophy for it and yes, we'll be first place. But we also want our points total to be a certain amount, our goals for and against to be a certain amount. So we still have targets we want to meet. And I think that's what we've got to do. Um, our fans are something else. Our pitch, like, I think it's has been as good as it's ever been. You know, credit to our ownership. They replaced the grass next, last year and, and our grounds crew, they keep it so good. Like we, we train on it when we're in, in the home weeks and uh, we're looking forward to getting out there because our fans, like the energy, like it's everything from the families that we have in the section to the foot soldiers and the supporters group that bring the, the flares, the TIFOs, the banners, to the kids that wait around afterwards. And our guys are so great in giving their time. You know, you'll you get Marco as the captain. He'll bring the guys out and, and Dan Klomps and they'll be signing autographs for half an hour after the game, sometimes even longer, to just give back because that's what this community means. And you see it with our, our crowd. It's growing and growing exponentially. We're never going to come in and make a big splash. You've got to you know, earn people's time and love over time. And, that, and that's what, what we're doing. And to be able to have the opportunity to finish strong at home is all we've ever asked for. Yeah, and have the opportunity now to be crowned a champion in front of mm -hmm. the fans of Calgary, you know, and bring that trophy to a city that I know is so close to you and your family's hearts. That's mm -hmm. pretty special. Yeah, it is. I mean, Calgary's been great for me. It's uh, my adopted home. They've taken me in. So it's all a case of trying to give the city back. And we've been short of trophies of late and we've got our first one. And, you know, we also know that in playoffs, right, nobody's won at home. So why not be the first? So that's another great challenge to uh, put to this group. Great points, my friend. Look, winning is hard, right? You know that. That's why I love covering it. That's why you love the, the, the seeking for it. Enjoy it, my friend. You deserve it. You're a champion on and off the pitch. A great man. Congratulations on a fantastic season. Not over yet, uh, but thanks for spending some time for us today on this Monday. Thank you, KJ. I appreciate the time.